I always knew Deep Sea can cook, but I guess I was still not familiar with their game after knowing they have a staggering 84.5% profit margin and could theoretically make up to 500k profit a day. That's like 200 million a year, estimated with their current API traffic on R1. On top of that, during their open source week, they promised to share five repositories, and you know what happened? They had the audacity to open source eight repositories instead. If it's a new SAI lab, that number would have gone in the other direction. And no, this is not some basic level haha we built an AI interface type of open source code, it is pretty much the recipe of their 84.5% profit margin. These codes are some of the most hardcore optimizations made by some of the most talented people that other AI labs can only dream of having, so it is not a joke when DeepSeek said their moat is their talent. But if you're not too familiar with the LLM optimization side of things, in today's video, I'll walk you through what each of them does without going too in depth so you will be able to understand its impact on the AI industry. But before we dive into it, as you can hear, I'm currently traveling, but NVIDIA just had some pretty sick updates from Jensen Huang's GTC 2025 keynote along with my 4080 super giveaway that you can join right now. To start off, they have announced Blackwell Ultra, which has 1.5 times higher inference speed than the current Blackwell architecture. And for us consumers, they have shared more info on the world's smallest AI supercomputer, DGX Spark, which has 128 GB unified memory, which makes running local models cheaper than ever. They also announced announced RTX Pro, which are consumer GPUs that integrate the Blackwell architecture and would be available for laptop and desktop from 24GB up to 96GB. As for AI, NVIDIA is now focused on reasoning agents built for enterprise applications. Other than collaborating with some of the biggest brands to improve agentic use, they have also announced Llama Nemotron reasoning models, which is trained specifically for agentic applications and comes in three sizes, Nano, Super, and Ultra. So by introducing a stronger reasoning process, this significantly improves the agent's accuracy. And to integrate these new agentic functionalities, NVIDIA introduced AIQ, which is an AI blueprint that will connect reasoning AI agents with your data and tools, along with an easy-to-use interface for AI and data. But all these I just mentioned is only a small fraction of what was covered in Jensen Huang's keynote, and there are also a lot of other interesting announcements and even free virtual workshops about robot or simulations that you can check out on GTC's official website. And if you participate in any of the virtual sessions, you can also join my 4080 super giveaway that is only limited during GTC. All you really have to do is to join the virtual session that you like, take a selfie of you participating, submit it to my form, and you would have a chance to win a GPU. So join GTC virtually now with the link down in the description, and thank you NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. Anyways, one month after DeepSeek open sourced their DeepSeek R1 model and crashed the stock market, they announced this open source week that lasted 5 days with one release per day. Starting with day 1, the first repo they open source is called Flash MLA. If you have heard of Flash Attention, it's basically basically the same thing but for MLA, which is short for Multi-Head Latent Attention. This is DeepSeek's custom attention architecture proposed back in mid-2024. If you have not heard of it, the idea of flash for attention is that normally without any optimization, the GPU would hit a memory transfer bottleneck when the model tries to pass the input into the GPU for calculation all at once. So flash attention improves the speed by three times when you cleverly break down the input into smaller chunks, process it, and then move on to the next chunk, reducing memory transfer all without a affecting the output. But all AI models are served using flash attention nowadays, so it's not like DeepSeek's Flash MLA is that special. The catch here for this release is that it is DeepSeek's official version and written in CUDA, which is like writing in C++ before NVIDIA GPUs. But as a result, it beats most optimizations that use higher abstractions like Triton, which is Python based. The difference between them is kind of like CUDA is programmed to control every single muscle movement in your body to make you walk, whereas Triton only needs to say move your left foot, move your right foot, but CUDA offers maximum performance through precise control, while Triton provides simplicity at the cost of having waste operations. So with Flash MLA, they are able to choose out even more improvements compared to Triton while also optimized for varying lengths of input and output. Moving on to day two, the second repository they open sourced is called DeepEP, which stands for Deep Expert Parallelism. This is the first ever open source optimization library for running the experts for a mixture of experts architecture in parallel. The purpose of using the MOE architecture compared to the typical dense model is that it offers a lighter computational cost during inference by only 
only activating a part of model, aka a few experts, instead of the entire model. So inevitably, the trade-off is it'll be much more complicated to optimize for training, especially with how MOE has a lot of architecture variants. Before DeepSeek V3, we haven't really seen any super large-scale MOE models other than Grok 1 or GPT-4, because barely anyone dares to take that expensive leap where you could lose a lot of money from the inefficiency, so you might as well train a large-scale dense model instead. But with the release of DPP, this paves the first big step for any other companies that doesn't have a crazy big budget to efficiently train super large MOE models, especially with how the library is also written in CUDA. The library is so well-rounded that it has support for training, low latency inferencing, and can adapt within one server or across a network. This means researchers and smaller AI labs can now implement expert parallelism to train MOE models without needing an entire data center or having XAI level infrastructure budgets. To add on how cracked DeepSeek's researchers truly are, in the repository, they documented how they found an extreme performance boost from an undefined behavior for PTX, which essentially means they found an unintended behavior that can be used to exploit the hardware and make the process run much faster. To put the difficulty of this in perspective, if CUDA is C++, then PTX is like assembly for GPU. So they basically know the in and out of the hopper GPU design and beyond what's in the official documentation through trial and error, which would be incredibly frustrating for any sane person. Moving on to day three, the third repository they open sourced is called DeepGem, which stands for Deep General Matrix Multiplications. Similar to how FlashMLA optimizes attention mechanisms, DeepGem focuses on optimizing matrix multiplications that happen within not just attention, but pretty much every single math operation in an AI model. While most AI systems already use optimized matrix operations, DeepGem pushes performance even further by implementing clever techniques like warp specialization and FFMA SAS interleaving, which basically squeezes every drop of performance from the latest NVIDIA GPUs. Warp specialization is kind of like a factory line where you give different workers focus on special tasks rather than everyone doing everything, and FFMA SAS interleaving cleverly makes sure that the matrix operations are always overlapping to prevent the GPU from ever sitting idle. So DeepGem provides up to 2.7 times speed up for specific matrix shapes in standard operations, while also providing a significant 1.2 times improvement for both MOE model training and AI text generation. Keep in mind, this is a speed up at the lowest level, so any savings made here goes a long way. <clears throat> a quick intermission during the open source week by DeepSeek. Now during their off-peak hours, there is a 50% to 75% off on their API price, which basically made R1 nearly 10 times cheaper than O3 Mini. I repeat, 10 times. Moving on to day four, they actually released a total of three repositories, two of them are codes, and one is DeepSeek's profiling data, which has logs of their system's performance and resource usage. As for the coding repositories, one of them is called Dual Pipe, which is a bidirectional pipeline parallelism algorithm proposed in the DeepSeek v3 paper. The name itself is a bit confusing, like how does it make AI training more efficient by having data flow in both directions at once across multiple GPUs? So when you train an AI model, it has to follow a sequential order. It usually goes like a forward pass to make predictions and a backward pass to learn from its mistakes, which means GPU idle time is pretty much guaranteed and makes it even more wasteful when you need to use multiple GPUs. So what pipeline parallelism in general does is it micro batches these operations and overlaps them across multiple GPUs. So when given data to process from let's say batch one to eight, the GPUs are not just waiting around and doing nothing. But the real magic of dual pipe is that in order to reduce even more GPU idle time, batch one is entering the GPUs from the front while batch eight is simultaneously entering from the back. This can process more data than the previous best pipeline parallelism and reduce even more GPU idle time by doubling the amount of GPUs in a cluster and holding two copies of the model. What? But they proved it with math, so I guess I'll trust them on that. On the other coding repo, they shared a tool called EPLB that helps to improve expert parallelism for MOE models similar to DeepEP but on a higher level. Since MOE models are now super large, which cannot all fit onto the same GPU or even the same cluster anymore, and some experts do get used more than the others, this means some GPUs will be working hard while others sit mostly in idle, creating this imbalance. So the solution? Duplicate popular experts and keep 
keeping highly related experts together physically or even on the same GPU. Moving on to day 5, which is also the last day, of course they have to end it with a banger, which is by open sourcing the fastest distributed file systems in the world. This repository alone is probably worth a few hundred millions if they serve it as a business. But no, they somehow decided to release this file system that has a 6.6 .6 TB per second peak read throughput free for everyone. This repository called 3FS, which is short for Firefly file system can be traced back as early as 2019 where they shared in the block their early developments on this file system. They have further perfected for the purpose of specifically optimizing for AI training and inference with a priority on random read speeds due to the nature of AI workloads where data is often read only once but on a very high load. That speed is like downloading 54k movies every single second. The typical commercial distributed file systems would struggle to reach even a fraction of this performance. And for you to realistically use this, they even released the eighth repository called Small Pond. Small Pond specifically uses 3FS through DuckDB, which is an SQL database and lets you scale to petabyte level datasets while maintaining simplicity. Small Pond is then able to organize 110 TB of data in just over 30 minutes, reaching an average throughput of 3.66 TB per minute, which is absurd. But of course, this is not the most absurd part, because on day six, which is not supposed to happen, they surprised everyone with their profit margin data, sharing detailed insights on the design principles of the system, and pretty much told everyone how they can replicate their system. And by open sourcing the best infrastructure out there, their framework would probably become the industry standard. But DeepSeek isn't just your typical open sourcing anymore. They are changing the tides of AI research by lowering the price of intelligence and defining how AI will be trained at scale going forward. With what seems to be their strategy of avoiding to create a cash cow honey trap for themselves so they can focus on making the best ever research instead, this whale company truly deserves a huge respect for driving progress that benefits all humanity and not just their shareholders. So with this insane amount of infrastructure codes now being available, the price of AI models will definitely go down and 2025's AI will explode at a speed where no one would expect. And if you enjoyed this type of cutting edge AI analysis, feel free to check out my newsletter where I cover the latest and the juiciest AI research papers. On there, I usually cover new and fascinating research ideas that I might not have time to turn into videos, so if that's your cup of tea, definitely give it a look. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Miguelim, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shaner, Marcelo Ferraria, Zane Sheep, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.